what did I think of Rings of Power? Well, it has post-1990s George Lucas syndrome, where how something looks and where it's placed is more important than how believable something is, and more important than having fully fleshed out relatable characters. The scenes are laid out like a dark children's storybook. I mean, check this out. It looks like they're about to create Captain Planet. And a legion of elves went to war. The action scenes and violent scenes that I've seen so far in these first two episodes are very choreographed looking. But they're also very short-lived, thankfully. I don't get bored like I so often do with so many action flicks. It also seems they really, really want to have several plots going on at the same time, continually switching between them, and always being able to build a feeling of the unresolved, kind of like something that you'd see on the show Lost. I mean, it's a way to keep you drawn in, but it's also very formula. To me, to have a really good movie, you have to make the characters relatable in some way. It doesn't matter what race, gender, sexual orientation, uh, your nationality, or your culture that you come from. Characters should be able to be relatable, at least a little bit, by everyone. Even the bad guys need to be relatable at least a little bit to make them believable. Unless we're talking about comic book characters, and then it doesn't really matter, right? Which is just another reason why I'm generally not a fan of comic book movies, unless it's in animated form. If Galadriel is the kind of person she's supposed to be, she should have been kind of buff. She should have had a lot of scars. She should have looked kind of rough in general. Nothing about her appearance or attitude tells me that she's been through a bunch of battles. Yeah, she looks stern and she says her lines sternly, but it doesn't matter. She looks like a fashion model with minimalist makeup. Oh boy, she can do a tuck and roll. Impressive. And she's so sure of herself that she'll do this. Everything is too perfectly placed and lit, and so much of it is acted out like a video game character. Again, it's like the Star Wars prequels, as if physical actor placement and demographic are more important than just about everything else. More important than the acting itself. More important than the actual character itself. Galadriel is overzealous, single-minded, unreasonable, and apathetic to other people's situations. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to like about her, other than her fashion model physique and uh, carefully applied tear-resistant makeup. But you know, apparently she's able to kill dangerous beasts with her strength, skill, and bravery. Beasts that just killed and maimed many, many tough warriors. But her fashion model physique and tuck and roll really saves the day. You know, because armor, Hollywood, and basic choreography. Her character doesn't really make sense as a person. Again, I connect with her about as much as I did the characters in the Star Wars prequels. The scene, you know, right near the beginning of the movie where they have her walking in this war zone with a, a pile of helmets that's like 20 feet high. We learned many words for death. That looked like something you'd expect from a comic book or a, or a graphic novel. And it made me ask the question, what creatures stacked the helmets that high? Was separating the helmets from everything else an important step? Do they also stack their jock straps in ways we can't see? And why isn't her dress even the slightest bit dirty on the bottom? You know, after walking through that area. In a part that happens later on, you know, uh, I, I don't want to, to ruin it too much. I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler here. Um, what the heck is the Blessed Realm? Is it essentially a place to go to die? Is it like Carousel on Logan's Run? Do they really go through some transformation and are still alive? Since none of this is really known, her reaction to it on the ship is rather confusing. There wasn't enough information for it to be able to make sense. You know, there, there, and there were some unexplained traditions going on. Oh, yes, you need to stand in this formation on this ship 
And then eventually you you set down your sword and you hold hands and and then she just bailed. Yeah, sorry, a bit of a spoiler there, but it was just like, uh, what, what, what was going to happen? What, what was she going to die? What, you know, what was going on there? You know, in that scene when the sky was opening, what would have it opened to? And was this brightness, this bright light, was that actually the darkness that she was worried about in her mind? You know, again, was this her facing a form of death? What was this blessed realm? They never really let you know, at least not in the first two episodes. Maybe you'll find out more information later on. And that's one of the things that has me curious about looking at further episodes. The most relatable and likable character is Nori, the curious Harfoot. Most of the other Harfoots just mindlessly follow rules and don't really question anything. Yeah, Nori says some really cheesy things at times, but at least she seems like a genuine person. The Harfoots, so far anyway, seem to be the most down-to-earth characters in general, and they're supposed to be. And they even go a little over the top with it sometimes. But I got enjoyment out of their little village. The Don Lemon-looking dude with pointy ears, whose name is apparently Aronder, is probably the most plastic uh, when it comes to his acting out of, out of any of the other characters prominently featured. I get that he's supposed to be a tough warrior and stoic, but he's just too plastic to me. As I said in the trailer reaction, the Dwarven City is amazing looking. I found myself rewinding some of those scenes multiple times just to see them again and just go, wow, that's that's amazing looking. The tension between the main dwarf Durin, or Prince Durin, and the main elf Elrond... I mean, the main elf that that is uh, featured in the movie in, in, in this series so far. The friendship and tension between those two characters, it, it was relatable in some way. So, and, and that's one of the, the things that this, this series really has a hard time with is, is relatable characters. The music in this was very effective and very well done. It was nothing like the inappropriate music they had in the trailer. But none of this music is memorable at all. I couldn't remember a single line from it, even as I watched it a second time. I give this a 7 stars out of 10. Why so high? Because I did get some enjoyment out of it. And I wanted to see it a second time to pick up on the things that I missed the first time. And I'm glad I did. You know, I look forward to episodes 3 and 4. I want to see what happens. I want to get an understanding of a number of things now that maybe they'll they'll do what they did on the show Lost. Who knows? But uh, but uh, yeah, I want to see what happens, even though this suffers from Star Wars prequel syndrome, you know, that's fine. Anyway, thanks for watching.